Hey, welcome. Uh, this uh, video is about five exercises you can do on your foam roller. Um, they will seriously change your uh, practice and help you be injury free. So get it out of your cupboard. It's probably collecting dust like mine usually does. Uh, we're going to start with the upper back, the thoracic spine. So turn to the side, lay it in your mid back, give yourself a nice big cuddle. Start to look towards the navel and then as you lift your bottom off the floor, you'll start to feel pressure in your space between your shoulder blades. Just for 30 seconds, just roll up to the neck and back down. Up to the neck and back down. So applying reasonable pressure, if it's painful, don't work into it. It shouldn't be a walk in the park, but it shouldn't be painful. If it's painful, you can add your uh, hands to the floor so you're relieving a little bit of pressure. Or if your neck hurts, which mine sometimes feels it's too heavy, then put your hands behind your head and take it like this. So your call, cool. see what feels right. Start like this, but if it feels like, oh, your head is really too heavy, then put your hands there and take it here. So when you've done your 30 seconds, oh, working into the upper thoracic spine, releasing, massaging, sending some self-love in there, looking after yourself. If there's any points which are really like not knotties, not as in not, as in they're really solid and not like, just stay there for a few, two or three breaths and just apply a little bit more pressure Again, if it's too painful, relieve it so you're not putting too much pressure on. It shouldn't be uh, agony, but it shouldn't be particularly comfortable. So find that sweet spot between the two and get going. Okay, that's definitely 30 seconds. So coming off your uh, foam roller now, the next one is going to be your glutes. So deep into the piriformis, you come onto the, I'll do it this way to begin with, you come onto the foam roller, Cross your legs by putting your ankle onto the opposite knee. Put your glute that you're working on onto the foam roller and then just go up and down. Oof, that's strong. So if you run, if you cycle, if you do squats, any form of exercise or even just walking, walking around, this area gets really tight. When you get to the piriformis bit, which is pretty intense, you could hold there, take two or three breaths on the point of intensity and then roll again. So you're just moving into the fascia of the body. So this is the connective tissue. You work and move and start to explore yourself where feels appropriate. You just do 30 seconds on one side and then you come onto the other side and you do 30 seconds. I'll show you from the side. So you're sitting on the foam roller, supporting yourself with your hands placing your foot nice and square, keep your chest quite bright. If your arms are a bit short, then just put your hands on blocks or big books if you haven't got blocks. Roll onto the glute you're working on and then start going forward Ooh, and back. Weirdly, you might find one side is much, much tighter. This is much tighter for me than the other. You might have a dominant leg. You might have been working harder on one side. I don't really know, but um, you're starting to explore. As in yoga, you know, you are the observer. You're not getting involved too much in any stories. Just be here, try and be totally in your glute muscle, giving that some attention. If there's any particular points that are intense, sit on it, breathe deeply into it, and it will release. Good. Good. When you've taken 30 seconds on both sides, the good thing is with uh, rolling is you're not supposed to do it for hours. You get the benefits in the first few, you know, few minutes. So just 30 seconds to a minute is absolutely fine. The next one is TFL. So this is often the cause of hip pain. So you're going to come on to lie on your side on the foam roller, and then you're going to rotate slightly backwards. So again, you can support yourself with hand or back foot, and then you're going to roll. It's between the hip the top of the rib, the pressure between the bum and the hip, basically. Ooh, I nearly fell off it. So try and be in the middle of it. And then rolling up and down again, you might find that there's particular points that are very painful. Don't go into deep pain, but go into discomfort. 
For me, I'm coming into the QL, the quadratus lamborum, which are the muscles that move me sideways because that hurts a lot. But for you, it might be more on the waist. Just go into your body, have a look. You might roll back, slightly back, and that's where your tension is. You might be slightly forward and it's in the obliques. Depends what your exercise and body's like. You're gonna do 30 seconds one side or up to a minute and then the other side. And then quadriceps. So number four is your quadriceps. You're gonna put the foam roller on your mat this way. Place it uh, above your knees. Start to come forward as if you're coming into a press up. So I'm totally supported here. I'm, I can apply as much or as little pressure onto my quadriceps as I, I like. So you're going to lift your toes and roll forward and backwards. Now watch my feet. I'm turning them in and out. So I'm either putting my toes together like pigeon toed and rolling this way, or I'm putting my heels together and rolling this way. So you're again, you're exploring the front of your quadricep. You could even, if you get, when you get more experience, start to roll more on the edge towards the IT band. I would spend a minute here for sure. If you just want to do one at a time, you can come like this. That gives you a bit more support so you're not putting as much pressure on. If you're very new to uh, foam rolling, just try and keep it super simple. Super simple. Rolling in, rolling out, breathing in, breathing out. So I'm controlling it. I'm letting as much or as little pressure as feels appropriate for my body today. If it's uh, too much on the hands, you can take it on the elbows. Good. Sometimes if I've got a bad tummy or if I'm a bit sort of uh, congested in the tummy, I can come all the way up and sort of roll the stomach as well. Good. So once you've done your minute on your quadricep, well done, you're coming to the fifth and final exercise of this little sequence, which is the calves. This is the one for me. I didn't realise how much tension was in here, but uh, you might find the same. And the Achilles, so lower calf and Achilles, wow. So again, coming onto your hands, lifting your weight up, and you can just roll forward and roll back. If and when you get a little bit more brave and experienced and the tension starts to leave, you could cross one ankle. So you could roll the upper calf, lower calf. It's quite challenging because you're just trying to get a technique as to how to roll it. Again, rolling on the inside and the outside. Maybe cross your ankles if you want more pressure. Good. Whoa. If it's down in the bottom of the calf, just leave it lower, of course, and take it here. Good, just 30 seconds. We'll do the trick. And then you'll come down. Well done. You could just roll that to the back of the knees, line your back, and give yourself a moment to just absorb all of that self-care, that self-massage, that self-attention you've just given in. And take 30 seconds just lying, breathing, and absorbing. So it really squeezes, it's literally like a massage. So make sure you drink lots of water afterwards and try and do it. I know it's not uh, easy to punctuate your day, but try and do it every day. Good. And that's your five roller exercises for you to, uh, to try and do every day. Thank you.